Hey guys, so Cal Val here. You are listening to the Hitting the Turnbuckle podcast. Welcome to the Hitting the Turnbuckle podcast with me, your host today, Dave Robinson, and my glamorous assistant, Adam Cousins. How are you doing today, Ad? I'm good, my man. Good evening. Uh, yeah, I'm the glamorous assistant again. This is this is all about you. This is you book this thing. I'm it's just strict trolls, you know. I'm trying to I'm trying to take yeah. over. You burst through the forbidden door on the WWE this week, so or well, starting Saturday, so it's all good. But tell no, us, stop me now. Yeah, tell us who have we got today? So today we've got um, two friends of mine on. Um, they are big names on the UK independent scene. They're well respected by. A lot of people that have gone on, a lot of wrestlers that have gone on to the WWE uh, and America and Japan, and some of them started um, at these guys' training compound or training facility in Tipton. So two of the nicest guys in wrestling and two of the nicest guys you could meet, you know, anywhere, to be honest, period. Uh, Lee and Jim Hunter, the Hunter brothers. How you doing, lads? Oh, Dave, thank you. That was a really, uh, nice, really nice intro. Thank you. Uh, no, it's, it's it's absolutely true. You know, we were saying before... I had him we... as well, sorry. Hello, Hi, I'm sorry. Hello, <laughs> Yeah, before we went live, Jim, we were saying um, about the, the British wrestlers that we get on uh, all know about you guys and, and have all got nice things to say. Um, so, yeah, it's great to have you both on. Um, we're just going to have a chat about wrestling. Um, first and foremost... What are your thoughts on wrestling in 2023? Uh, well, first of all, thank you for the really nice introduction, Dave. Thank no you very problem, much. Jim. And it's really it's nice to see you. Um, I will hand that on to Lee because I haven't really been around wrestling for the last probably two or three years, probably three years as much. Okay. So I think, but while, while Lee's been very active, so yeah. What 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 do you think of wrestling in 2023, Lee? Great. <laughs> no, that's good it's good massive bounce back isn't it from covid yeah. and it people definitely seems and going that way. And chopping and changing yeah. massive massive bounce back it's, it's, uh, obviously a few years ago obviously the wwe signed a lot of independent talent and it seemed to really hit the british independent scene and then off the back of that with covid as well um but it just seems to us that there's a big buzz about wrestling everywhere at the minute, whether that's in the States, whether that's in the UK. There's a lot of independent shows and independent companies, uh, a lot of really exciting talent coming through as well. So um, what's, what's, your been, what's your experience, Lee, of, um, of you know, the last six months on the independent circuit? I think the way I've seen it and what I was involved with, times that, that people was hungry to get out, out their houses and get back on it and yeah. then people on TV and people elsewhere in other countries was just doing what they did and making sure they kept wrestling going you know what I mean yeah so it's, it's been a good intake from everyone you know what I mean everyone's had, had to put their um they really have to put their efforts in just to keep it alive and keep it on it from across the world yeah and, uh, and it's survived massively. It's it's not took any dip in mind. Might have gone quiet, but it's like you said, uh, yeah. everywhere's busy, everywhere's interesting. I was everyone's at, got um, a favourite. It's, it's really good. I was at the BCCW show in the Black Country, Lee, where you were on uh, last yeah. weekend, and <laughs> yeah. I was I was really impressed by the setup. To be honest, the you know they oh, had yeah. the, they had the yeah. screens on. You all had entrance videos. Um, it was a full house as well, and there was a lot of kids there, which was which was nice, you know, to the next generation of wrestling fans coming through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Is, that, is that a good thing to see, you know, the amount of kids that are, are, are coming to the, the live shows? Well, that that's always been the key, kids and families, you know what I mean? That will always be the key to, to any wrestling show. It definitely um, seems it, that, it, yeah, that's the kind of demographic in the UK, and that's how it always used to be, wasn't it, when, when wrestling was on TV right. in the 70s and 80s? It was always like a family-friendly thing and and yeah last week at the show you were on there were people there there were nans and granddads there and there was yeah kids there probably seven or eight years old and then everything in between yeah the the best part about it is, is like you said the setup's nice and neat nice and tidy it's you know a lot a long turn in tipton and um and you know nans granddads kids mom's dads everything that 
they're all they're all enjoying it. They're all boys. They like what they like. The the cheer and boo and the do and do and yeah, it's just a great atmosphere. It's brilliant, and you, you'll find that everywhere. Everywhere you go, it's just it's good atmosphere. It's, hey, you get you what say, you what you expect. Sorry, Lee. would you say the talent now? Even like we we're doing the show in July, so we've got a show coming up in five weeks now. We're working with Ignite Wrestling Pro, and we're putting on the show called Buckle Up. And we I went to yeah. see. My, my first show from Ignite back in April. And I say this okay. all the time, there was talent on there, even in like the opening two matches where, you know, you generally get the crowd going and you build up towards the main event. But even the t- the guys at like the first and second, third match on, like if the next day you had heard that they had been called up maybe to a performance center or a ca- training camp for say an American company, you just wouldn't be surprised. It took me by surprise how good even the talent what you'd say the lower card talent on the show was just as much was just as good as the talent at the main event. <clears throat> yeah, well, yeah, everyone wants to wants to get to the top of the talent. They don't want to get to the top, and that that'll never change. People, they do what they do, and if you enjoy it and you like to do what your your, your talents are, you, you go and do it, and that's all that matters. And if you're there to to show the quality, then you want to get up there as quick as you can to show that. You want to be there, but everyone yeah. plays a great role in what they do, and that's all that matters. That's all yeah. that really matters. Everyone enjoys it, and everyone works hard to get there and do it. In in terms of your career, lads, um, obviously you you started a long time ago as as a tag team, and was that a concerted effort to that you wanted to be a tag team as brothers? You know, some of the great brother tag teams over the years, the Hardys come to mind straight away, uh, the Young Bucks. Is, is that something that you both wanted or was, did something happen that caused you to be a tag team and you just kind of kept it that way? This is that moment where we both no, answered it. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> no, no. We got I forced. did. I really did. Totally forced. forced. <laughs> totally forced. No, I really wanted us to be a tag team. This yeah. is where we answered it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it, was, it, 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 it just, it, as soon as you started training, it's like your brothers, yeah. you look the like, it was in, it was, written there right and then you couldn't you couldn't change it you got to do it and and that was it we just ran with what we had and we enjoyed it and that was all that matters mm. you know what I mean yeah, yeah we never we never we did it with a question didn't we really you just was I think we showed up we trained in Birmingham formally trained in Birmingham we obviously we, you know we, we don't mind saying we started out wrestling on mats like a lot of people do yeah. you know starting backyard and um we we, we went training formally in Birmingham and, to um, get better at backyarding, what was quite funny. Get, which was yeah. true, is we, we went training yeah. formally in a ring to get better at being backyard wrestlers. That was the bizarre yeah. logic beyond going. Um, we didn't really go with a great intention of, of progressing past. We just like wrestling, if you know. We liked it since we were kids, and we got to this age of like young adults and um, just went along to train. We followed Brandon Thomas, who um, <clears throat> maybe people don't know is an FWA wrestler. And Jack Xavier both wrestled the FWA um, through the nineties, the late no, sorry, the millennium, sorry, late nineties, millennium, maybe early millennium, I should say. Sorry, my times are wrong. But we just showed up to training one day, and they were doing a show, and they just put us on. And we had tracksuit bottoms on. We were just going there to train, and they put us on, and they just paired us up. They, they obviously just naturally assumed that we were going to be a tag team, and from then on, we just always we were always tagged. Really, I think this is probably the longest period. Then either one of us have gone on our own. Yeah. Um, thankfully, it's Lee and not me. Just trudging, <laughs> trudging people through matches. It's Thankfully, it's the good one that's doing it by himself. Oh, no, and, you, um, you, you're very and, good. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that, that's, yeah, we never really, uh, we just kind of, we got on. We had to just iron out the creases. It was a we ending, really. It took a few years. But... Yeah, yeah. Is that the first time you both wrestled in a ring? Uh, no, yes. it was trying... No, we're training, we're training, we're training ring, ring, yeah. aren't we? In a yeah. dodgy, well, I wouldn't say dodgy ring, but not a. It was like a boxing ring, wasn't it? No, it was. Yeah. It was a wrestling. It was a wrestling ring. It was. Um, it was pretty decent looking back on it, really. Um, but yeah, we did. It was, we, we, it did, was we did okay. go well, in between. That's another reason yeah. why we went, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. There was a yeah. ring. So ropes, it was hitting ropes. Decent. We never hit ropes before, and that's why we went. Yeah. Uh, did you find that tr- transition from being backyard wrestlers uh, and wanting to improve to so all of a sudden you're in a ring and you're learning to run the ropes and um, you know work in a proper wrestling ring? It's a. It, so it was a big it was a big transition, but for us, I found it I thought both of us and a few others 
obviously people like Jack Xavier and Brandon Thomas went on to work for FWA and I think it was a positive thing. <laughs> there were a couple of guys that went with us yeah. who struggled completely, couldn't adapt to the idea yeah. of changing how we were doing our fun little thing to wrestling into actually hitting ropes and hitting buckles and, and things like that. But um, I think generally that it, the, the difference is night and day. You know, if you, if you are, you know, whatever your ambitions are in wrestling, always go and train and go to a ring yeah. and learn in a ring and learn from people first before you do anything, no matter what your ambitions are with it, whatever you, whatever the bar you set yourself. Yeah. Um, because it, it, it made us better just by going, I think. Yeah. Was that where Jody, Jody Flash, Jody Fleisch? I don't know where you say it. Is that where he was in the FWA? FWA, yeah, it would have been Jody Fleisch, Johnny Storm. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, his, yeah. Uh, I, mean, I, I, I mean, the guy's still in his heyday, really. I don't think he ever ages. He's, he's still tremendous now. They both are. They're both yeah. like, like, tremendous now. Um, Alex Shane. Yeah, Alex Shane, yeah. yeah Mark yeah. Sloan. Um, there's a few other names escape me, but Harry yeah, Cabrera that... was on the main. That's okay. the one yeah. Yeah. yeah, Doug Williams. Oh, yeah, Anarchist okay. Yeah. And obviously, yeah. Mark uh, uh, Sloan. Mark oh, Sloan. Oh, we had Martin Stone yeah. on a few months back. Yeah, yeah. Martin yeah. Stone. Yeah. 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 Um, sorry, Go on, Ed. Well, what do you guys make of like how tag team wrestling is positioned on, say, the American shows? Now, obviously, I grew up late 80s early 90s so it was like demolition rockers money inc yeah rock and roll midnight you know and they were it was very prominent and then i kind of felt like the wwe just felt like okay now we're just going to say we're not using you we're not using you so we're going to put you two together it's kind of got back a bit more now with like usos young bucks and, and people like that but do they still not position it how they should do, do you think? Because it should be more prominent feature than what they're doing at the minute. <clears throat> I I think so. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I'm not too much of an insider, but you you hear little things about how it's not valued that much. It's not valued yeah. as much as the singles guys in the in the WWE. I don't know how much. You, I've just heard that off, as off comments in different interviews I've heard people say. Yeah. But... Um, it does work in peace. It, it kind of works in, in the flow. You have a period where there's lots of tag team talent, and then there's a period where people just seem to be paired up, and then it kind of finds its way again. And there's plenty of generations, like when the Rhodes family were tagging together with the Shield. Yeah. And it kind of every few years, you you seem to get this rotation of the Dudley boys and the Hardy boys. And, you know, um, and then it kind of tells us. The, the, the main event at Mania with uh, Sammy and Kevin. Sells, st- yeah. The, the, was mm. that the first? Night first one, night, 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 night one. Yeah, first night. Yeah, yeah it, it's more yeah, I mean, trios now, though, isn't it? Mm. Like, it's brilliant though. One, it was yeah. the story told it all, and you know I mean, they, they can deliver it. They can do it. You know what I mean? And everything changed and drops. You know what I mean, and yeah, I thought it was brilliant. One of the best mm. things I've seen in ages. It was. Lee, how how have you found the transition then? Because obviously, Jim is currently not wrestling. Uh, and then you became like a Good. singles wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you find that? Obviously, always every show you did, you was kind of side by side with your brother in tag team matches. And then all of a sudden you were Lee Hunter, the singles guy. How, how has that been? To be honest, it, it, it's, a, it's hard to say. Well, no, it's not. It, it was good to have that bit of freedom to be like, right, off a rock and I want to do this. And this is how we're going to go. And this is what I want. And... And, and, and in one way, I suppose it's easy because you're only communicating with one guy and the ref instead of four guys and the ref and the tag. But then also, you never have someone by your side to kind of ask, do you think this is right or do you think this is wrong and what would yeah. you do here? But then also, when you're committed to say, this is what we're going to do and I, what, this is what I want is going to go and then someone's behind you doing nah, that's crap, we ain't doing that, don't do that, and blah, 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 blah. Then you might, right, we've got to sort this out before we talk to the next two. You know what I mean? It's, and obviously, it's the vice versa if you're talking to another two guys and they're not, you know what I mean, linking up or they're not like what we're saying. It's different. But yeah. that's all I can say. It's different. It's exciting. And, and I'm, I'm trading new waters. And that's what makes it exciting. Very exciting. But Push I can it. still hear him sometimes when I'm doing my singles match. I can still hear that. <laughs> Yeah. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> so it's I'm glad still you there. Do. 
I hope it wakes you up at night. But I also, I have, I have texted him and I have found him sometimes and I said, oh, this is what I've done and what do you think I should do next and where should I go with this? And it, he just told me his opinion and I value his opinion and I'm like, you know what, yeah, that's good. Even though he talks rubbish, but I'm like, yeah, that's good, that's a good point. That is, I'll, I'll take that on. That's Jim, fair enough, that's all I can say. Jim, I've got to ask you this. I know you probably don't want to answer this question, um, but... Everybody would want to know, particularly the guys at BCCW who I was talking to last weekend. Are you ever, do you think you'll ever come back to wrestling? Do you think, obviously things happen in life and there's different priorities and stuff. Um, do you think, <laughs> do you think you'll one day make your return? And Go on, Jim. I, I feel like I, just to, just to knock the legs under from Lee, I think I should now, definitely. I think really, def- definitely, to, about almost, out, almost, almost out of spite. I think I'm going to come back and make you attack with me <laughs> next week. Have you ever had a singles match for, on a show? Or yeah, yeah, yeah I've done a few. Yeah, we're yeah there were always the yeah. Never again. Oh, oh, between the two of us, sorry. If we have, yeah. if we worked each other, yeah, we Near have a couple other, of yeah. times. Yeah, yeah, a couple of times. Um, we sometimes are okay. We did a couple here and there. I think when we were working without any kind of kind of baggage on. If any, you know, we did it like I don't know if you went. We, I think we did one on a holiday camp show. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. Yeah, and because there's no kind of preconception of who we are, we just went out and did the rest. Yeah, of but that was it, it was uh, in front of about fifteen hundred people, and it was like it was, one of the yeah. biggest audiences we wrestled probably in our careers, and it was like we're going to yeah. send you to it, and we want you to go through. And it was like, yeah, yeah, this is going to be great. Mm-hmm. This is unreal. We really enjoyed it, and we went through it. And, there was that attack one. Remember the attack press start one? We done oh, yeah. That was probably that one, was, of, was one of my one. favourite. Probably one of my yeah, favourite matches really I've done. Yeah, yeah. But that was that due was... to the characters and the music man and ideas. Yeah. The wrestling was terrible, but yeah, we, we worked <laughs> Just, really hard on that match. And was to, fill, with it. to fill in the gaps, I think you can still find it on YouTube. Attack do, um, and I think they're still, they, they were up until. Um, I don't know if they have formally come back now, but they do a show called. We did a show called Press Start, which was like, like a, a dressed kind of computer, like a character-based show, and we were the we wrestled as the Mario Brothers. So I was Mario, Lee was Luigi, and we did a series of spots that incorporated like the like we both ducked under the ring and the old underground music played, and we had all the, like the sound act, effects and the props. Was on the fly as well. I put my eyes at on, and that was a yeah. Problem. Yeah, 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 and he, he turned me when I wanted to the, the one moment that sticks with me was we talked about we built a Mario Kart out of a bread crate, and <laughs> and um, so I got I was trying to run him over. I got the ref to push me in this bread crate to try and run me over. So I leave then threw a banana skin on the floor. This was all outside, and then I, I spin out like in the game, and then Lee said, "Well, this went you know talking about it. So I, I'll do I'll do a dive." And I said, "Well, do do just like a." No, yeah, no hang on. Before you carry on, before you carry on, we made the Mario Kart and we said, let's get a turtle shell. And we was like, right, we'll go to Aldi. We'll buy a loaf of bread, like a fresh loaf. Oh, yeah. I forgot about Spray that. it That's red good. and I'll throw it at your head. And he was like, yeah, that won't hurt. It's just a piece of bread. <laughs> and you said that was the stiffest shot of the whole match. So yeah. I threw it's this just... loaf of bread at his head and it was like a piece of rock. Like, it's one of those like crusty loaves, but you got it about we got it about we got it about half past six, so it was like it's proper like a rock hard piece of bread. Like nobody was eating that after that was going straight in the bin. Yeah. But it, bounced, it just bounced right off my head. That did. It's, then, it's like some of the stuff that DDT yeah, you get up to. Yeah, yeah. The, the press start shows were a lot of fun. We had lots of fun doing those. Oh, we could talk. We could sorry, talk what all was night you saying before the bread? What did you say? I was going oh, to jump well, the water on. We talked about doing like rounding and off. You threw the bread off my head. We'd spin me out with a banana, and then you ju- like jump on me. But Lee decided to like hit hit the ropes and like do a torpedo right through the middle of the ring with me sat on like a little bread crate, which was quite scary <laughs> because that was like I did say to him specifically, "Don't do that, please yeah. don't," because like first I'm like sat crouched like all like cross legged <laughs> in in a little. But I can't get up. I can't do anything. This thing's on wheels. But now he's, he's, he still did it. Did the, FWA, oh, did the FWA not prepare you for that moment, Jim? Was that not part of your training? That wasn't part of the training, strange <laughs> enough. No, no. <laughs> Tell you what, that needs to be sent to Jim Cornette and have a fucking field day. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> going into some of your experiences lads you some of the guys you've wrestled you know it's like a who's who of, of wrestlers um a lot of guys in the past a lot of american guys have come over here the likes of tommy end you know malachi black uh the young bucks uh, I found out the other day that you'd wrestled Imperium, you know, you'd wrestled Walter and Ludwig. Oh, how, how are those chops? <clears throat> They're good. They're very good. <laughs> did you take some chops off Walter or Gunther? Yeah. 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 How did oh, you yeah, find yeah, working with him? One, yeah, I had to. Unfortunately, Jim got out of him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got a bit, I, mean, I got the one when he when he drapes you over the top rope. Like, Ouch. Like, over the corner and does it. How did you one. find working with them, and how did you find them uh, outside of the ring? Oh, they were they were I mean, excellent. Yeah. I think they were both. I mean, they were both excellent. A few. I mean, that's a good while ago when we wrestled them at Progress, and um, we, we did a match at Fight Club Pro a few years ago as well. Yeah, yeah, that was um, Timothy Thatcher on it as well. That was yeah. Sorry, Timothy Thatcher and what? And, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, really good. Really solid. Awesome. Really just just easy to get get working with and. Walter's yeah. fun as well. He just, you know, what you're going to get with him, and just, just, he's quality. Was quality. it clear yeah, to exactly. you guys that he, he perhaps would go on, and you know, uh, you know, being on these shows, the the aim for a lot of wrestlers is to go as far as you can with it, I suppose, and uh, and it, the highest level is probably the WWE, and now he's yeah. been how long has he been the Intercontinental Champion for? Ad, yeah. well, it's over a year, isn't it? Was was that? Phenomenal. Did that surprise you, or did you think, no, that's yeah, he, he was yeah, that good. no, it didn't surprise me. He was gonna do something for definite, he, he was mm. definitely wanting him. He was just when you work with him, you, you automatically knew, like, yeah, yeah, he's gonna do something yeah. important, he's gonna do something good. He, yeah. he was so all, all the credit to him, he's worked hard for it, and he's, <laughs> he's working hard for it, I suppose. And, yeah, that's it. Yeah, good, on him. good on him. We had some really good matches. He's really good. We used to watch him just work sometimes. If we could get a chance, we'd just go and watch him because he could. Yeah, oh, yeah. He, he can do, particularly in an, in an era of like we were like working adult shows at a point where the pro, progress type style shows were high. We were doing those type of adult shows, and he was able to. He, he's able to go out and and deliver really like he stripped down what you're doing in the ring and still make it incredibly watchable if you know what i mean there's no need he doesn't need to do more than he does yeah because he's that good he's so good at it if you know what i mean and that's like that's the kind of the art form that we that, that and if you can do that in front of what is effectively a cultured audience and they still really lap it up then you know you're obviously doing something really really well yeah i think their match the triple threat match at wrestlemania it was uh it was gunter drew mcintyre and sheamus wasn't it yeah and that, that was probably match of the card. I don't know if you saw that, Lee. Uh, I, I, I maybe I think so. I, yeah, I couldn't remember it, but it's, it's selected matches. But yeah, yeah I get to see clips of what he, he does and yeah, what, and some of the matches he does and, and his pro, even his promos in the group and that. Yeah, it's it's good to watch. Even on the internet feed, it comes up and you're like, oh hello. You know what I mean? It's, they've really pushed it well and they're doing well with it. So it's nice to watch. Mm. How about um, you, you? You wrestled the Young Bucks. I, mean, I take it this was pre pre AW. How long ago was it? And uh, what was your experience working with the Young Bucks? I'm just trying to remember the year. I'm terrible with dates. How many it, was, it, was, uh, it was something mad. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't they something like there was in Japan or Ring of Honor champions? Bullet Club. It was Bullet Club yeah. period. Yeah. yeah, it was. Yeah. Bu- and and did the didn't we? Have, we was the champions. It was like face and face, and we had to go over, and it was like. Well, there we're gonna swing this, you know what I mean? It's not mental. We were like, we worked for a promotion called Southside. Yeah. Um and yeah. we had a very good run as tag champs at Southside. Um and we were treated really well there. <clears throat> um but the difficulty of that match was because we went in as the their tag team champions, we effectively have to win that match. Um so it was a bit of a it was a, a difficult kind of planning because the easy the easy result is they go over and they should you know yeah they should go over really <laughs> you know um yeah. but they were really they were really nice about everything when they lean they, they were like yeah they're kind of quite high up on the bullet club run at that time were you quite so nervous like, yeah. going into that match jim because obviously yeah. Everybody, everybody even if you vaguely watch wrestling you've probably heard of the young books so <laughs> 
Just imagining these guys coming in from the stage. You've got the opportunity to wrestle them. I imagine that was quite nerve wracking, particularly was, when you tell yeah. them that you've got to win or they're told yeah. you're winning. Yeah, it, it, it was. Because in all fairness, they've, they, they've got so much behind them, quite rightly, that having to do that kind of, that finish, which really, you know, it, it should be switched over, really. We should be putting them over. And... They were, they were just really nice about everything, to be honest with you. Um, yeah. But it was, yeah, so it was very nerve wracking. Cool, yeah. Um, bless them, I think, like, I mean, the story I just took away, I, I take away from it was uh, this was all this was all me, really. They they, they came and they they, effect, they were right at the end of a tour. So they were coming back from Japan to go back home. They had, like, a handful of shows left. They were really tired. Um and you could kind of just just see it in them how tired they were, and they went out and they worked really hard for us. Um, you know, we we put that we put the match together with them, or, or you know, we kind of just let them put the match. We didn't even put a great deal. We just kind of let them do their thing, and like bless them as a brothers tag team, which we can completely sympathise with. They argue like they they kind of disagree like brothers do. Yeah. So it was just interesting to watch them go through their process doing that at the point where they they're obviously like. They've had a long, a long tour, you know what I mean. So they're just, they're just tired as well. So it was just kind of interesting to watch him go through it. And like, I went out with, sorry, I went in the opening spot. So we were planning this match. We were out last. We had to put it. We were, they were putting it together. We we did this opening spot. I'd kind of talked a good game about, yeah, yeah, we did this, and you know, like kind of, we put this spot together. Um, the opening bit and the first thing I did I blew the first part of him I think I hit the ropes and blew, it was a tackle spot real simple boom blew it um and after I mean after like we'd spent all evening with them you know going through this match and they go out with a guy that they don't know that they met that night who blows the first spot <laughs> he was telling them he's fine you know what I mean like oh yeah I don't go and blow the spot and um I think it was I think it was Nick I was with. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. He just picked it straight back up and carried on. There was no, there was no change in what we did, and he had every right to change it. He could have changed the, the entire opening section of the match. He could have changed the entire match. Just thinking this. If you want even after anything, just carry on. No, with it. no I just got to carried on, yeah. and they were like really, like, like really professional with us, um, because they don't know us. They, yeah. they, you know, they don't know who we are, and. So they meet. They come to meet me. I get in the ring and blow blow the first thing. And <laughs> they were just, they they, after the match. Really nice. Yeah. They were just really really nice. Like they they were they were um they were very easy to get on with. Really nice guys. Um, that that, that that's the story I always take away from them. They were just so professional, you know. Yeah. Because they could have you know they they could have made that call there and then just like we got to change this here now because yeah. he's, he's obviously he's obviously can't do a tackle so <laughs> let's change it Wait, but um that, they know, they're, they're professional really nice guys it was a great experience to be honest it was a real good learning curve when you're having those kind of experiences lads and you're wrestling the likes of the young books who are obviously a big name in wrestling and they've done these this long tour and the, the big names in japan how did that did did you, were you at that time looking yourselves to kind of follow in their footsteps and, and go to Japan or was, was that was that in your mind at all or was it always just something a, a, as a hobby? How how serious did you want to like push on in wrestling? Um, I, got, I, don't, I don't think it ever entered our minds to be honest. Yeah. With you. I don't think we ever went to Japan. No, no, I don't think. I mean, unless it was offered to us i don't think we ever thought it would come so we yeah. never really pursued it in any way shape or form we we just we just did, we just did what what we did on the weekends really yeah. didn't really i think we just kept yeah yeah and what working your... class yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah. as i said we're just working class family and we we had real jobs and yeah wrestle on the weekends and we was just lucky to be involved with some great people and great places and mm. We just took it like, oh, that, that's nice. And, yeah. and then where people took it as a real career and a real job, we was like, oh, yeah, that's good for you. Carry on. And for us, it was a bit blind from it. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. We just, we're just happy to plod along and have to crack about. Like, you know what I mean? What's, uh, so what's like, your plan now, Lee? We, we didn't even do 
My the, plan. Your plan, yeah, because obviously you you've got a singles run and you were on the show last week. How many how many shows? How many bookings are you taking? Um, what are you are you going just around the UK or are you just staying local? Oh, the plan's not changed. Still just prattling about and flying the long way. <laughs> Still doing the same. After 20 years, nothing's changed. Brilliant. We, uh, I, don't, we I don't think we ever we ever approach wrestling. I don't think we ever went to, went into it thinking that any we get any more than we than we. I mean, we yeah, we were true. given so we, we, we were put we in so many positions that we, we never got, yeah. yeah we never expected it. I mean, like speaking personally, um, like I really was very fortunate for the level of ability that I had to go and do the matches I had really, and to work the people I work with and be around the people I work with. I learned an awful lot. Um, you know, I think I, for the level that I really was at, I think I did very well, and that's why I never, I, I never really thought, um, I never really thought past that. Really, we were just like dead fortunate to get the matches that we got. Like we, we were yeah. people all over the UK, and you know, we worked Johnny Storm and Jody Fleiss in the tag match, which was like a really, I never thought that cool would happen. Man. We worked like Chris Daniels and Frankie Gazzari, and we, we, we worked wow. We worked yeah. Dan Maloney and Tyler Bate when they were yes, we did, yeah. Yeah. very young, and yeah. look where they're going. Yeah, we got we got yeah. we got to be very lucky to touch all bases. Yeah. You, yeah. Did you train Dan Maloney? Well, Not specifically. We trained with him. No, we yeah. trained with him. Yeah, I don't. We didn't. We, we didn't. We never train anyone. We train with people. And with that's, people. that's the that's the real truth. You know what I mean? Mm. Did, we train with people, and we never train someone and say, "Oh, yeah, we've trained you, and you're ours, or whatever." We train with people and they take what they know, what we've learned, and hopefully they use it. And uh, that's all we ever wanted. And yeah, a lot of the people we, we spoke we to. We want to train with everyone to get better ourselves. Yeah, they they credit you guys with like their improvement. And even though it perhaps wasn't a training session with the Hunters, they learned a lot from you guys and we're really appreciative of everything you did for them. I know Pete did Dunn. They? Pete Dunn <laughs> trained with did you they? as well, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, Pete, yeah, we did train with Pete a lot, actually. Yeah, thinking about it, we did. Um, yeah. He didn't live too far away at the time from where we were based with the ring in Tipton, and he dropped in. We did some, like, training seminars. We got people like Jack, Dave Taylor in and... Um, Johnny Kidd. Johnny Kidd, yeah. Johnny Kidd. That was really good. And and Pete came to those. Um, and obviously, Pete now in the WWE is just qualified to be in the Money in the Bank ladder match. So he'll be at the O2 Arena in a couple of weeks. Oh, yes. Oh, good. Um, yeah, he's obviously in a position where he'll be he'll be wrestling for an opportunity to wrestle for the heavyweight championship or the world title. What Was it clear, like similar to what you said about Walter, was it clear Pete Dunne just had it? You know, he was going to achieve big things in wrestling. Yeah, I think I think Pete. I always thought Pete was always going to do more for me. I always, for the moment, I met him. Pete was like a like we. I really we really like Pete. We really got on with him, and he, he's like a kind yeah. of a, an old. He was always like an older, wiser head around everybody. He's like yeah. more sensible. At nineteen, he was more sensible than we were at thirty something. To be fair, <laughs> you know, like he probably he's, he's way more sensible than us now. I'd imagine. Um, very focused guy and really, really studious and really uh, very, very talented. I always thought he'd go and do more. The WWE slightly, about, I thought he would have gone perhaps across Europe or Japan, perhaps. But um, a credit to him, he's done tremendous. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Especially when you think about everyone storming the truth at that time, because yeah. there was a mass amount of talent getting up that hill quick. You know what I mean? It was all getting up there. And, you know yeah. what I mean? It's, just how it goes, isn't it? You know what I mean? And they've won done really well, but Pete done even better. So that, that's it. Good on you. We, we play a bit of a game towards the end, lads, and we just do a bit of word association. So we give you some wrestlers just randomly, and you just tell us what you think of them. So the okay. first one, I don't know if you want to go first, Jim, on this one. Uh, Finn Ballot. Um... I I really when he was in the bully club he was like he still is really hot now but he was like the hottest property in the world at one point wasn't he Finn Balor? Yeah. When he was Fergal Devitt at um New Japan. Did you wrestle him in, in the UK? Um when he was No, Fergal. we weren't we, we no, never we, we, met never, him. We, we, we met him as on shows and yeah, he was on a few shows him. that we were. He was doing the painting gimmick at the time, aren't he? 
Oh, the demon. Yeah. Is it the demon ad? He done a lot of different. No, things. no, he was, he was doing, doing comic uh, books and. Yeah, it, it show. Yeah. I showed up. I went and saw him. He come out as a guy from Silence of the Lambs, with the mask on and all that sort of stuff. He done. Oh, that. He nice. Really when he come out. But uh, Dave, I'll have a quick go. Uh, Tom, yep. is that who he supports? He supports my club. So, Finn Balor, Tottenham. There you go. Tottenham yeah. fan, is he? Oh, he wow. is. Yeah, I see. I see. I saw him there once. He was at a game that I went to, and so was Cena. Funnily enough. But, uh, yeah. Oh, wow. so. Cena is for his sins. So Next name. <laughs> you you go first on this one, Lee. Uh, Brock Lesnar. What's this one word association? Yeah, yeah. What just I... just the first things that kind of come into your head when when you hear the names, really. Brock Lesnar. Or wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. No, unreal. Yeah. Look at his career. All career. Unreal. From from start to finish, and yeah. there's more years to come. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, everyone said he's the, he's the wrestler. And so, yeah, definitely. 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 Jim? Buck Lesnar, yeah, he's this kind of like the seminal wrestler, isn't he? He's yeah. kind of, he defines, he defines the generation of wrestling, I think, Buck Lesnar does. Cool. Add? Beast. Beast. <laughs> oh, actually, Miami, because when we met, at Miami, that was the show that we went to. I think we met we met outside Access at WrestleMania, but there was the yeah. war that we went to that night when he returned and the pop as well, and everyone absolutely going bananas in in the yeah. um, Miami arena, including myself. Uh, yeah, it'd been rumored, hadn't it? But nothing yeah. was confirmed. And obviously, the roar after WrestleMania is usually quite uh, you know it's a hot show, and there's a lot of European fans in the audience so yeah it was a, a great moment when he made his return um triple h jim you want to do this one first uh triple h he's so been around forever hasn't he triple h i remember getting back into wrestling uh in like the late 90s i'd had a tail off through the mid 90s through my teenage years kind of giving away how old i am really like i was giving for my teenage years <laughs> i didn't yeah. watch it did for and then the late 90s he was there and he kind of like spearheaded all of the changes really oddly enough like his obviously he outlasted michaels after wrestlemania 14. yeah triple h kind of become goes through like he's a sense and it's an in like um he's just been there all the time has he been on top for the entire time do you think he's a safe pair of hands to be leading the company obviously vince is is getting on there he's still involved and i think he'll always be involved until mm. the day he dies, probably be involved think... when he's dead. Don't worry. Yeah, <laughs> you think Triple H is the man to take the company forward into the next generation? Well, it's probably beyond. It probably beyond me to really have an opinion on it, but they probably want somebody of that ilk of a wrestling knowledge to be in charge. You know, be able to creatively lead them. Yeah, um, he's been around it all his life. He's been in that WWE system all that time. Um, he's yeah, probably is the best person, isn't he? Really? I mean, yeah. I don't, I don't know. It's it's a bit too. That's like the snow on a mountain for me. I'm, I, I, I don't know, but yeah, um, yeah. It seems like he seems like the, the the obvious person to go forward. I think. Yeah, Lee, your thoughts on Triple H? Uh, great worker. Yeah, like Jim says, top of, top of the mountain and great worker, safe pair of hands. Yeah, steering the ship. He's got a good mind. What he wants to see and what people want to see and future and yeah yeah he should have he should have put sting he's always been in good shape yeah. for his age fair play to him he definitely should have put sting over yeah Jim, sting I, I totally agree add your your <laughs> thoughts on triple h mate uh he was my hero at one point when he first when he first had that quad injury and he come back at msg I just uh, i don't know i never really liked him before that but he, and he's also had the best entrance music ever like one of the all of his music, barring the first one he had in the WWE, the other two were just sensation. And DX, of course. He's a good heel. He's a good heel. Yeah, yeah brilliant. Yeah, he's brilliant. automatically unlikable. Mm. Yeah. He, it wasn't just his music, was it? It was the whole presentation. It yeah. was the whole entrance that he did so well. And it was kind of I one mean, of the first iconic entrances, I suppose. There was a video that WWE put up. Uh, I was at WrestleMania in Phoenix. And I'd, I'd done his entrance because you could do it at Access and you could like come out of the curtain and you could play his music and you can do it. I'd I done it, including the water spit. Yeah. Cool. 
And lads, uh, who who for you guys is obviously you guys were a tag team. Who's the greatest tag team of all time in your opinion? The Hunter Brothers, of course. Why? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, question that is. Ad, do you want to go first? Well, that's the last question. Yeah. Is it, is it the, is it direct into what we've seen or who we've wrestled or what we think or? Well, you could do both. The best tag team you've wrestled and the best tag team of all time in wrestling that you've Ooh. watched. Ooh. <clears throat> I'd probably pick a few. I, 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 I mean, admittedly, I've not watched a great. I don't watch a great deal of wrestling, but I do think FTR. Yes. Yeah. Really, really, they're one of the best teams I've seen in um, of, of, of really of ever. Really, I think they're tremendous. I admittedly, I haven't watched. Um, there's going to be some people who've watched a lot more. Everyone have seen much more of them, but whenever I've watched them, I think they're just tremendous. Yeah. Um, the Lee. Brain Busters was one I always. Ooh, I've got a yes. few. Oh, the Brain Busters. Yeah. Mm. Lee, who are yours, mate? Uh, it's hard to call, man, because there's, there's so many good teams with different different swings about and what they do and how they do it. Did you, you know, enjoy the, old, the like the Dudley right? matches with the Hardys and Edge and Christian? Because that yeah, was probably yeah, around the time was, when that, you were getting that into That was it. great for the time. Yeah. What, you know what I mean? Initiative and, and it was a bump friend, uh, frenzy and, and, and shock value and things like that. Yeah, I mean, that was... That, that was great for the time, and and they're still going. Oh, it's really important. Like same as the young books, and it's it's a real difficult thing. You know what I mean, you watch so many tag wrestlers, and what really gets me going is when you see them do something so different and so yeah. nice, and they respect the rules, and it's just smart, it's real smart wrestling, smart mm. ideas, and and smart ideas to their gimmicks and and. and their personalities and yeah you know i mean that that's you know what i mean that's what i enjoy the most now about tag wrestling because some of the stuff i see sometimes and i'm like that that's that i've never even thought of that you know what i mean i'm like yeah. I, that didn't even cross my mind you know what i mean and and, and they're they're able to touch platforms and jump jump stones and hurdles and all sorts and do all this and that and i'm like that's it's mental mental brilliant brilliant yeah. mm. but if i if i was going to go back if i wanted to watch some tag wrestling that Oh, I enjoyed. I would go back to the eighties. I like yeah. that kind of. I really enjoy that the crowd atmosphere of clap and boo, and here it comes, and one, two, three, and the crowd erupts, and that that's real emotional there. But yeah, but the Rockers but, were a big that's, influence that's for us. In the, 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 the Rockers, yeah. yeah, the Rockers were a big influence yeah. for us. Yeah, yeah. Rock and Roll Express are very good. The Rock and Roll Express are very good to watch. If you track back and watch those, yeah, guys. yeah. Everything they do yeah. is like hot. Oriental like, Express. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Stuff, like, like, yeah. We got to That's meet Mark Ginetti and we asked him about that. And that yeah. was a good laugh when we were asking him about that. Yeah, yeah. Pat we just told him we stole all his We just told him we stole all his stuff, didn't we? Just took it all. <laughs> what did he say? He just said um, he was very gracious about it, wasn't he? He didn't get angry or anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah he was like, yeah, thanks for using it. Carry on doing it. And, yeah, that'd be, yeah, it was really nice. All rest, all everyone borrows moves from each other, I suppose. Well, that's it. it all comes around on the wheel, doesn't it? It comes, it hmm. turns back around again. Then what we've seen twenty years ago comes around again, doesn't it? And yeah, what we've seen six months ago comes around again, and someone invents something new, and it's like, wow, that's brilliant! Like, mm, yeah. that's how it goes. It's it's great to watch. Keep watching it and keep doing it. That's, that's what yeah. we can do. Isn't it? Adam, have you got a favourite tag team, mate? Or the, who who do you oh. think's the best at the minute or of all time? I do too. So I think the best of all time is only because I was there. Uh, SummerSlam 92, Legion of Doom on their, yeah. their Harleys uh, with Paul Ellering. Uh, that just, even I was, what, eight, eight at the time. And it's still to this day, I never forget that image of them coming out on the bike. And they were a great tag team as well. Right now, I, I, I have to say FDR because I think they epitomise everything a tag team wrestling should be. Yeah. So I, I say FDR is the best team currently in the world at the minute. Cool. Well, last question, lads, and then I'll, I'll hand over to Adam to, to give our, our sponsors a shout out. Um, Jim, you didn't really answer before about whether you'd ever get back in the ring. You, you thought you'd got it. But if you're not going to answer that and you're going to keep us in suspense and your uh, your fans in suspense, um, do you Which miss fans? Yeah. <laughs> do you <M> miss? <laughs> well, sorry, Dave. 
I was just just asking if you miss it. Obviously, you spent a lot of long time doing it. You had all these fantastic experiences. You're doing it next to your brother as well. Uh, even though obviously life has gone, you know, you've gone started a family and things. Do you do you miss that atmosphere and being there and being part of it? And, and is there a little bit of envy when you like see Lee doing it and think, yeah, maybe I could be back out there? I, until I, I've seen clips of him doing some of the bumps he does, and um, my body doesn't envy it at all. Yeah, I'm grateful. My body's very grateful for not. <laughs> quite yeah. frankly, uh, do I miss it? Um, slightly. I, I I didn't miss it as much as I thought I would. But I, my last match was the week of pandemic lockdown. Um, and I think I think that really kind of changed my mindset because I think the kind of world stopped yeah and I got I have two children now and the, you just I was just so the day to day is so busy there just isn't really time to think about stuff. um I, I but I, there's, there's that definitely the element of, I, but we've we've done so much I've done so much wrestling we've done so much traveling on roads we've owned re, uh, rings and set you know done ring cars set them up set them down giving them all over the place that there's elements of it that I don't I don't miss in that respect. Um, yeah. It's a bigger question than I think that when I'm asked that question, do I miss it? Because I kind of do and I kind of don't. If I'm being honest, yeah. And I think it's just because we I've done. So, I won't say make it. It was never. I never was my my, my living, but because of because you're doing it around life, it, it you do so much of it. It ties you out. You know, we trained three days days a week some week maybe four days a week as well as doing wrestling um we did so much of it so it's just it's it's a it's a tough one to answer without going into lots of detail which i apologize i'm talking loads i do miss it um yeah. but there's at the, at the same time i could probably not do it and know i've i've done enough of it if you know what i mean at the same time you I don't, I don't yeah. yeah yeah there's no great yeah that's that's the thing that, that's the thing I, I know i've done a lot of it but yeah. i mean you know lee needs someone to <laughs> roll that bottom roll, hit, him, hit him with the title belt and then stand over him um, that's me I think. i'm crawling on the floor mate <laughs> i need that <laughs> i'm struggling <laughs> uh, finally lee where can where can people see you next do you have you got any shows coming up <laughs> I don't know, actually. No, <laughs> honestly, there's, there's a few, actually. Um, I need to look at my door. I've got to do a poor answer back. Honestly, change so fast and life so up and down. Um, and family life and things like that. Um, I went back and done BCCW. You saw me in Tipton. Um, yeah. That was on the... I, 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 was, I wasn't going to do it at one point, but I did do it. And then I done Pro EV, sat straight away down. And, and I've got one down in Cardiff for Society Wrestling for, um, that's on a Sunday day and I'll just take it as I go and turn up when I come and go and you know, you know that, that's it you know what I mean there's a, a few good ones a few whatever and I'll just enjoy it now and that's it that's all that matters that's all I can do just enjoy it Wicked. Well, it's been great talking to you lads and thanks for giving up some time this evening to talk about some of your experiences in wrestling Okay. Oh no, thank you, thank you, Dave. Thank you. Adam. No problem thank at all. Thank you, thank you, you for accommodating us. Thank you. No much. problem at all. Anytime. Yeah. So Martin, sorry, Dave, you did hand it over. Okay. So a few sponsor shout outs. Obviously, buckle up. Twenty third of July. Tickets are still available. Dave will be there. I will be there. The whole of Team Buck will be there. We're, put, we're co-producing an event with Ignite. All six matches have now been announced. The final one was announced this evening in the breakout division. There's going to be a special announcement on that show, which I cannot say any more about on air anyway. We'll tell you outside. We'll tell you what they want. Uh, the Jurassic Pro Wrestling out of in Essex. Uh, they put on a great show a couple of weeks ago. I attended that. That was a very interesting ending. Again, speaking of tag teams, I can't get into what happened because they've still got a couple of matches left. But uh, suffice to say, uh, that was an interesting ending. I've never seen a, the, the, you know, they normally say send the crowd home happy, that they certainly didn't. Uh, on, that, on that show, um, shout out to Pro Wrestling Carnage out in Wales, our tag team beers and beatdowns. Dave, they were not wearing their shirts today. Uh, no, we're not. You know, that's another great tag team that, that, we, that we sponsor. Um, I'm always talking to them on a daily basis. 
That is really about El Corey McRae, one of the top rising talents of uh, British wrestling. Uh, he was out in Hungary a couple of weeks ago. He's done amazing things as well. So we keep, we're keeping our tab, tabs fairly on Corey McRae. And he will also be at Buckle Up. He's defending his title in a triple threat. So we'll get to see that live. David will be your first experience of uh, Ignite. So I hope you Yeah, will. I'm looking forward to it. And as we keep saying, British wrestling at the minute is doing really well. And long may it continue. Indeed. Uh, maybe a yeah. couple of, Dave, yeah. don't give us any clues about a guest like you did the other day. Or you totally gave away who we've got coming on in September, even though it's not official yet. Um, but we got Angela. Sealed. Yeah, yeah, your hand wasn't. Um, we got Angelina Love on tomorrow, which will be good. We're looking forward to that. And then we've got a couple of special ones next week, which, again, I'm not going to name on air because we want to make sure they're recorded before we... Uh, we announce it but uh yeah, yeah we, we've got some good ones next week two partner next week actually <laughs> and it's my birthday next week so wicked happy birthday well, we to... thank you happy birthday yeah happy <laughs> birthday, Adam. we met uh angelina love as well a few times yes yeah, nice Nice lady. Yeah, we're looking forward to that one tomorrow. It should be good because we're doing a lot with the NWA as well. Like just doing a lot of review shows. I had a lot of their guys on. And uh, just so happened, Angelina, we'd already booked Angelina to come on and we started all this work with the NWA. So it's kind of worked out quite well, really. In a you long know what's time. quite interesting? I was thinking about it. We were talking about all these tag wrestlers. No one mentioned, mentioned the, 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 the Kings of Wrestling. Remember Cesaro yeah. and oh, yeah. Hero? Yeah, yeah. yeah. they kind of get yeah, quality. They're one of the best tag teams of all time. They kind of get not mentioned yeah. anymore. There was, a, there was one mm. that WWE just threw together and it worked, which was the bar. Cesaro and Sheamus. Yeah. That was just like yeah. Yeah. together. It's mental, isn't it? You get gold, didn't you? Sometimes. Yeah, it's mental. We saw Kazarian, him at Noah, remember that, Jim? We yeah, we just see him at Noah. Yeah. Oh. Kazarian oh. and Daniels was always the one, one we really liked. Yeah, yeah. 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 we really yeah. liked that, I suppose. Yeah, it was really, we weekend. wrestled them as well. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah, that was that was like a big highlight there. Uh, yeah, I think Kazarian's always been massively underrated, to be honest. And I think the opportunity now he's getting in impact wrestling, he's really showing a lot of people what he can do. Um, yeah. He kind yeah. of backed himself and, and took a gamble on it because he was under contract for a couple more years at AEW, but he wasn't happy with his situation and, and now he's doing great things. So I've always been a fan of Kazarian. Mm. No, yeah. Wicked. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, guys, again, Jim, Lee, thank you so much for coming on the show. No, nah, thanks for having us, man. No, you're thank welcome. You. Dave, I will see you for a double shot tomorrow. You can have your AEW stuff back. Uh, you can bring back Dynamite Man Dave tomorrow. Yeah. DMD makes his comeback uh, tomorrow for our review, and we'll be back with Angelina Love. But until then, everybody, buckle down, stay safe, and we'll see you soon.